It's getting nearer, Mr. Henderson. Distance 180 miles and it's traveling at 150 miles a minute. That means it'll reach us in just over a minute, whatever it is. I think I've got it tight. It's the same as ours. Mr. Henderson, I can see it. It's a spaceship. Oh, that's impossible. Oh, yes, you're quite right, Valerie. It is a spaceship. But I've never seen one like this on Earth. Distance now 20 miles. But it's heading straight for us. <laughs> Take over the pass, sir. Are you allowed to depart and bring the brake off? Hello, MR1. Hello, MR1. We must break orbit immediately to avoid collision. Over. Let's condense it with about only 50 miles between. Henderson, break orbit at once and come into land. Over. What do you think it is, sir? I don't know, but I'm not leaving there to find out. If the Lonnie's made Martha's knock, you can see the tail. We're 40 miles away now. It's going straight on, Mr. Henderson. There can't be anyone in it. You mean it's just going round and round? Who could have put it there? I don't know, Jimmy. Perhaps you'll find out when we land on the moon. Henderson, you've broken orbit and you're now falling in towards the moon. Now get on your bunks and follow my instructions. I'm going to try and guide you in. Over. Right you are, Wedgwood. Over. Ah. Oh. There are only three bunks for the four of us. All right, Valerie, you take mine. I'll break myself against the bulkhead. Turn ship and fire retroactive motors. Because of the emergency, Henderson, you won't be landing in the sea of vapors. But I'll bring you in as close as I can. Distance in? 90 miles moon surface. Approach angle? 135 degrees terrestrial north. I've got them. Keep watching, John. Right. Approach speed in. 3,000 miles per hour, closing 2,500. Take it easy, Henderson. You're still coming in too fast. Distance and angle? 40 miles. 180 degrees terrestrial north. Can you give an estimated landing position? Just a moment, sir. That's at least 150 miles away. 150 miles away. All our supplies are on that rocket. He's gone. He's dropped behind the horizon. Now we've just got to keep our fingers crossed and hope that Henderson can land that thing. We're coming into land. Distance reading, Jeff. Two miles, 400 yards. Two miles exactly. Right. As Dix. Nearly there, Val. Val, are you all right? Yes, Jimmy, I've got my eyes closed. That's a good idea. Here, Hamlet, let's all close our eyes. I'm coming in at the wrong angle. <laughs> Jimmy's right. Come on, let's have a look at the radar screen. Yeah, look. There you are. There's a continuous radar echo all around us. Let's speak to Daddy on the radio. He'll want to know if we're all right. We can't. Not if we can't see him. Why not? Well, radio signals won't go over the horizon. They do at home. Yes, because we, I mean they on Earth, have a heavy side layer to reflect back the waves. There's none on the moon, so radio signals will go straight out into space. 
I'm afraid we're cut off. But if they go straight out into space, then some of them will go to Earth. Perhaps Jean could hear us. Yeah, of course, you're right, Jimmy. Jeff, start calling Buck and Island. This is Buck and Island calling MR2. Can you hear me? Over. That's Jean. That's Buck and Island. Hello, Jean. We can hear you. We've landed safely on the moon. Over. Hello, Jeff. Do you know where you are? Over. No, we're lost. Over. All right, not to worry. Keep transmitting and I'll try and get a direction finding fix on your signal. And stay where you are. I'll contact MR1 and call you back. Over and out. That's safe! Thank goodness for that. Where are they? Hello, Jean. Where are they? Over. They're about 150 miles, 150 miles terrestrial northeast. Over. That'll be just on the edge of the Sea of Showers. Hello, Jean. Can you give me a more precise bearing? Over. Well, there could be a 30-mile error in any direction, but they're in a crater. They're getting a radar echo all around them. Over. Well, that could be a guy. What's the width of the crater? Hello, Jean. What's the width of the crater? Over. They reckon it's about 10 miles wide. Over. Okay, Jean. Over now. Thank you very much. Could be one of scores of craters in that area. Well, we'll just have to go and find them. I could do with some exercise anyway. Don't worry, we're going to get plenty of legwork, Professor. Between us and the Sea of Showers, there are the lunar Apennines, and they rise to 20,000 feet. But couldn't we take the rocket, would you? Can't afford to use the fuel. No, we're just going to have to do some climbing. Space suits and all. Yes, and the moon's surface temperature is 215 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll be like walking through a sea of boiling water. We've got to stay where we were until they find us. Well, why not us find them? Because that's how people lose each other. Anyway, you can't see more than five miles on the moon because of the smaller horizon. But if we climb up one of those mountains, we could see further, couldn't we? You know, Jimmy, when you get older, you're going to be quite intelligent. <laughs> yes, and we could transmit further, too. Of course, Jeff, you're right. Come on, we'll take the long-range portable transmitter to the edge of the crater and see if we can contact MR1 from there. On second thought, sir, Jeff, I think perhaps you'd be more useful here to keep contact with Earth. All right, Mr. Anderson. Right, now, come on, you three. Get your space helmets on. I'm going to open the cabin of air to open the door. What's Hamlet going to bring? I haven't finished making his spaces yet. Give them to me. I've got an idea. Hello, MR2. This is Buck and Island calling. This is Buck and Island calling Moon Rocket 2. Over. Hello, Jean. Henderson here. Over. Hello, Mr. Henderson. We've had your newspaper telephoning us from London. They want to know when they get a report. Over. Has Professor Wedgwood's party left MR1 yet? Over. No, I believe they're still in their rocket. Over. Then tell my paper that the first people from Earth are about to set foot on the moon. Over and out. Look, Jimmy, I've put Hamlet in one of the spare helmets. That ought to give him enough air for half an hour. I can let him out after you've gone. Thanks, Jeff. Hello, Hamlet. Can you hear me? Oh, poor little thing. You ought never to have brought him. He likes it. It makes a change for him. He's the first guinea pig on the moon. Right. We all ready? Ready? Yes, we're ready. And now we'll open the valve. Here we go. Come on, Jeff. Give me air pressure readings. Oh, it's... Billy, we haven't got any bikes yet. Oh, don't be out of that. It's all right if I look up. Why don't they make them for my size? Yeah. Here we go, then. Air pressure, Jeff. Good. Here we go.
pass me the transmitter, will you, Jeff? Good lad. We'll keep in touch with you by walkie-talkie. After we've gone, close the doors, turn on the air pressure again. And then contact her, right? Good luck. Thanks. Aren't you excited being the first man on the moon? Jimmy, I'm talking to you. Jimmy, he's not making any noise. There you are. How's that? That's better. What were you saying, Val? Oh, it doesn't matter now. Well, come on, we better start walking. Ah, where's the highest point? Let me see. Ah, there we are. I've just had a relay message from MR2 through Jean. They've uh, gone out to set up a transmitter base. They shouldn't have left the rocket? That's all right, sir. They've only gone to the edge of the crater to increase the radio range. Well, that was a bright idea of some this. <laughs> Set our route plotted off, Mary. I've got an approximate route. The rest will have to lead to luck. Now I realize how Columbus must have felt when he found America. Except it was worse for him. There were savages. That's one thing we won't <laughs> find here. We're the only savages. What was that thing that crossed our two spot? Oh, it was probably just a meteorite. If you thought that, why did you agree to the landing? Henderson said it was another spaceship. Are you quite sure, Wedgwood, we, we are the only people on the moon? The only living thing? Oh, come off it, John. You're a scientist. I'm surprised that you're going off into flights of fancy. Henderson's a newspaper man, remember, with a newspaper man's imagination. You picked it up on radar, Murray. Look, there it is again. It's traveling over us every 30 minutes. Probably a little moon around the moon, Doctor. A satellite too small for us ever to have seen from Earth. Does that account for the report we got in from MR2? They said it was a dead spaceship. There's nothing on the moon but rock and dust. Now, come on, let's start our search for MR2. Now, Jimmy, your science fiction books forget that although your gravity on the moon is one-sixth of what it is on Earth, the weight of a space suit cancels that out. So you save your energy, Jimmy. We've still got a long way to go. Oh, you silly girl. Do stop fooling about. I've lost my pick. It's gone in all this dust. Hurry up. All right, I'm coming. Oh, I've got it. Wait a minute. Mr. Henderson, look. What's the matter, Jimmy? 